Hello all. We're going to be doing chapter four, which basically talks about ethical and social issues in information systems. Before I start the chapter, I want to make sure that you guys are doing okay. You uh, stay at home. Please stay healthy and stay safe. In chapter four, we're going to be talking about ethical, social, political issues and how information systems make an impact or get impacted by these issues. We will also talk about the principles of conduct that can be used to guide ethical decisions and regarding information systems how does contemporary information systems technologies, especially the internet and the internet of things, how they pose challenges to the protection of individual privacy and intellectual property, which are very important in both from a personal point of view as well as from a business point of view. And also we will talk about what are the different laws that have been established for accountability, liability, and quality of everyday life? The first thing we want to talk about is the opportunities from new technologies are abundant, but those opportunities also can create havoc in terms of security reasons, privacy reasons, integrity reasons, and so on and so forth, as well as from an ethical standpoint. Most of the legal environment is still to be developed. There, we have some legal laws pertaining to security and privacy and ethics, but those are still to be developed. The solutions, of course, seems to be that we need to have a strategy, we need to have policies, and we need to put those policies to practice. We need to make sure that the employees understand these policies and abide by them. We need to look at big data and the benefits of big data as well as the problems with big data in an ethical sense and especially in the predictive modeling systems. Organizations use predictive modeling to identify individual customers so that they can profile them as for risk but also the profiling also is a problem simply because of vulnerability problems as well progressive insurance use predictive modeling to identify individual customers What they basically do is they divide, they use a small device. It's not only progressive, it is also State Farm and all state and all the insurance companies. They ask their customers if they would like to get some discounts, they have to install a small device in the car. This device will analyze the driving habits and give a better insurance rate but the problem is there are some criteria for lower auto insurance rates for example all state state farm progressive and other insurance automobile insurance companies like people who don't drive late at night because of accidents and don't spend too, too much time in their cars. However, 
Look at it from another point of view. Poorer people are more likely to work late shifts and have longer commutes to work, which would actually increase their auto rates or insurance rates because of these devices. Is that ethical to do? That is a question that you need to ponder. The problem is that technological innovations such as these devices used by auto insurance companies, they are beneficial to get a better rate, but at the same time, it's a double-edged sword simply because you have ethical issues like we talked about. So what ethical, social and political issues are raised by information systems? Let's analyze this by a few examples. There is a company called uh, Deerfield Management. Okay, Deerfield Management is a hedge fund and um, they use confidential information to trade shares in healthcare companies that would be affected by the changes in laws. But they and they are in Washington DC. They have a good lobbying system and they can use the lobbying system to foresee any kind of changes and make adjustments. Is that ethical? Look at General Motors. General Motors CEO admitted that the firm covered up faulty ignition switches for more than a decade, resulting in the deaths of at least 114 customers. More than 100 million vehicles worldwide needed to be replaced. Is this a good ethical judgment? Citigroup, Morgan Chase, Barclays, UBS, these four large money center banks. They pleaded guilty to criminal charges that they manipulated the labor interest rate that is used to establish loan rates throughout the world in 2012. Is that ethical? So in many cases, you wonder, where the ethical, social, political systems are working. In fact, information systems are used to bury certain decisions from public scrutiny as well. So you need to think about how information systems is beneficial to you as an organization, but also how information systems can be used to do things like burying decisions from public scrutiny etc so we come to ethics if we want to define ethics the best way to define ethics would be they are basic principles of right and wrong that individuals acting as free moral agents use to make choices to guide their behaviors that is ethics. Information systems raise new ethical questions because they create new opportunities. They create opportunities for social changes. They create opportunities for existing distributions of power. They create opportunities for making money. They create opportunities for the rights and obligations for individuals as well as businesses. And also on top of all this, information systems can be used for new kinds of crime. So let's look at it from, uh, from the ethical, social and political issues. You can imagine that society can be like a calm pond. If a rock is dropped, like for instance, the information technology rock is dropped in that pond, it creates rippling effects 
And these rippling effects are the new situations that are not covered by the calm pond. That means IT can create ripples of new situations not covered by old rules in, among the society. Society, social, political institutions cannot respond overnight to these ripples. They have to, they might take a few years to develop all the laws or expectations. And also it requires understanding of ethics to make choices in these many legally gray areas. So the book talks about the relationship between ethical, social and political issues in an information society in this fashion, as you see from this picture. So here you have the center of it all. You have the information technology and systems. You have political issues, you have social issues, and you have ethical issues. And the components of these issues are, one, information rights and obligations, two, the property rights and obligations, three, accountability and control, four, systems quality, and five, the quality of life itself. So we need to understand that and we need to focus on these five issues that are five solutions that we can bring together for these ethical, social and political issues. We can create these as five moral dimensions of the information age. So the five moral dimensions of the information age that you need to know very well is information rights and obligations, property rights and obligations, accountability and control, system quality and quality of life. So we will be working in the rest of the chapter on these five moral dimensions.